Am I in the frame on this phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about this, this latest article in the uh, Realtor Magazine about buyers that are gonna be in very competitive situations. So, you know, we'll talk about a couple different things is um, what the buyers gotta do and then what the agents really need to be aware of along the way. Um, the, article, the article said, you know, we have a lack of inventory. That's true. Um, but here's the thing, if you're working with the right agents and your, your agent's a full-time agent, um, you're gonna have a competitive advantage. The, the full-time agent, the one that's got experience, or the one that's um, learning and growing at an exponential rate, um, because I'll tell you, there's some, new, there's some new agents that are after it. So as long as you're in this full-time and you start looking at strategies around serving your client, um, number, one, number one thing that you really need to be educated on is that the listing price is almost irrelevant. Okay, you're gonna go into the house, you're gonna evaluate that house to say how valuable is it to you and what's it worth to you. So if, if, a, if a home has a price of 189,000 and you know that 10 people are lined up to see it that day, obviously it's probably gonna go over 185,000 or whatever, whatever the number is, it's gonna go over that because it's a high demand product. So really you got to forget what they've even offered it to you at and then you've got to go in there with an understanding of what you're going to pay for it, what you would be willing to pay for it, and make your absolute, absolute best offer. Okay? There's very limited inventory in every sector, um, except for maybe the, the highest end homes, and then maybe that's where the only buyer opportunity, you know, the really good buyer opportunities are, is if you're at the upper end of everything. But as, as you're trying to get into the home, uh, you know, the first time home buyer, the move up from the, like the first home you've, you've had and you're ready to move up, you're going to be in a very competitive situation. And, uh, and I kind of just want to, I want to talk to two different people here. I want to talk to the consumer and I also want to talk to the realtor that's trying to help their, their buyer or seller. Well, obviously the seller, you're going to, it's going to be easy. Your job is going to be easy as the listing agent right now. Where you have to be focused is how you're gonna handle the buying sides of the transactions, okay? So you need strategies. You need very high awareness around the market so you get your people first in line and, and you know the strategies to kind of get them the winning bid, right? So you're gonna start seeing uh, homes trickle on at a certain price uh, if you don't know what an escalation clause is, you need to get familiar with an escalation clause. There's some wiggle room typically in your fee as well. You know, I, I don't encourage, um, you know, lowering the fee at all, but in competitive situations, there might be, there might be something that you need to, you need to make um, maybe your commission, uh, maybe take your commission down just a little on that. There's, that's an option. I don't like that option, but, but to try to get that, deal done for your buyer that's an opportunity to help net the seller more money that other agents aren't thinking about so there's their strategy around that um, making your inspections uh, for informational purposes only i advise my clients to to do that because if they have an opportunity to get out um, you're just trying to package this offer up to be as shiny and nice and hassle-free for the seller as you possibly can and if there's something major that comes up on the deal, you might be able to still approach them on that. But making your, making your offer um, with an inspection that is an as-is inspection contingency uh, that's not obligating the seller to do anything is gonna make the seller feel very good about your offer. So there's some basic strategies around that. And then for the consumer, for the consumer, you guys have to be hyper, focused on what you want to do like what if your goal is important uh if 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 you buying a home is important to you or making a move is important to you then you pretty much have to be the leader in the actual search and communicating with your agent like the the homes that you're interested in like sending me a screenshot of what you're interested in and then me getting you on the calendar for as soon as possible just like the latest iphone like you've got to be first in line so it doesn't sell out. 
Southwest Virginia, you know, in this area, the New River Valley, the New River Valley hasn't seen any real decline. In, in, in my numbers, like the numbers that I talk with, with my, you know, with my uh, fellow realtors, you know, like we're not seeing any real impact uh, other than we have a lack of inventory. You know, all of our, all of our pipelines are full. You know, like right now, I've got a pipeline full of uh, about $2 million worth of buyers. And out of those buyers, I've got over a million dollars of people that will sell a home to get to their next home. So, you know, definitely remind me in the future, like if I'm going to film with that, then I need to cut the phone. I need to cut the phone app off yeah. of that. So, you know, pretty much to sum it up, I would say uh, who you work with matters and making sure that they're um, making sure they understand the situation and that they, you have expectations of them and that if they're not meeting those expectations, you need to go find somebody that will. Um, that's my best advice. I've booked uh, a bunch of buyer clients that, uh, that have gotten like two and three quarters interest rate. And that, that makes a lot of things affordable. You know, that, that purchasing power that you get versus like, you know, even 24 months ago, 24 months ago, they were, they were at 4%, you know, for the same home, your, your, your price difference is tremendous. I don't know exactly, but I would say a, a rate drop like that is probably going to save you over a hundred dollars a month. You know, you know, that's a good question. Uh, it's very volatile, you know, as the stock market is volatile right now. I mean, you see dips, you know, 700, 700 point swings in the stock market. Um, you know, and the economy is a big fear factor for us. And, and when fear enters, you know, the fear has actually been a benefit to buyers. You know, um, it's almost like the perfect storm. It's like, it's like a seller's market, but the buyers can afford so much because of the rates. Everybody's winning, you know, and, and growth, like the percentage growth, you've seen like 7.9% growth in, in year over year uh, value is is tremendous like that you don't see a, a, a rate of growth year over year like we're seeing in real estate right now so you know is that causing a bubble i don't i don't know that it is i mean people people are actually qualified enough they're not they're not um they're not getting into product you know or a loan that they can't afford everything's being verified you know there's no no verification loans right now uh, that I know of. So people have to go through, you know, all the verification of underwriting to make sure that they actually qualify for these things and they actually qualify for these loans. So their debt to income ratios are in line and everything is everything is solid for them to actually be able to do this. And there's not any shady practices going on that would create a bubble that would put us back into 2008. So, so that's, um, that's a very interesting time that we're in, especially in the middle of a pandemic when it seems like every news, every news outlet is crying that the sky's falling, you know, so.